Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. My name is Diego and today I'm going to present you the top five most common crusted gecko diseases. Crusted geckos are really hardy and they don't often get ill or sick and they don't usually have genetic problems either. That is also one of the hundreds of reasons why crusted geckos make great pets. However, there are always exceptions and some diseases and illnesses can be more common than others. So in this video, we're going to tackle just that. Which diseases and genetic disorders are more common in crusted geckos? Now before we get into the list, I want to say that there's no specific order. These are just some of the most common diseases that I have encountered and I've seen online. So don't take this as data, that is 100% true. In order for us to know which ones are actually the most common, we would need to run numbers and a lot of people are not only not comfortable with sharing their crusted gecko diseases, but also a lot of people might not know that their crusted geckos have a specific disease. So it's probably really hard to see which diseases are more common than others unless a vet actually makes that list. So without further ado, let's go straight into the list. In number one, we have the floppy tail syndrome. The floppy tail syndrome, or also known as FTS, is a problem that arises in crested geckos when they don't have enough horizontal space to rest or enough space in their enclosure. This causes the tail and spine to kink, which does not look right, it does not look healthy, and it could potentially lead to other problems. However, most of the cases of FTAs that you see are minor or they don't damage the crusted gecko much at all. It can be environmental, like I said, due to the poor enclosure, or it can also be genetic. If it is genetic, I would not breed a crusted gecko that has had a history in their generations just because you don't want to breed into the bad genes. If it is environmental due to a bad enclosure, I would keep an eye on the crested gecko and if needed, force a tail drop so that it doesn't get worse. Most crested geckos end up dropping their tails at some point, so it's not the end of the world forcing a tail drop. It is true that sometimes it is unnecessary and people do it without knowing that they could avoid dropping their tail. However, it is definitely not the worst thing that can happen to the gecko. I would rather my gecko be tailless than have a huge kink on its lower back. Also, I forgot to mention, but this comes without saying, if anything of this happens to your crusted gecko and you know that you can treat it, do it. But if you don't feel comfortable or confident treating your crusted gecko, a vet will be able to assist you and treat your crusted gecko way better than you can at your home with no knowledge. So please do what you have to do, and if one of these things happen and you can't control it, take your crusted gecko to a vet. In second place, we have two breeding-related diseases or problems that can arise. Now, they're not related at all, but I want to put them together just because both are common and both kind of happen for the same reason. One of them is egg binding, also known as dystocia, and the other one is hemipenal prolapses. Now, egg binding can happen due to a lot of reasons. Some people speculate that it could be because a female eats too young. I've always bred younger females than people say, and I've never had an issue. However, it is always good to keep an eye on it and make sure that it does not happen. Egg binding is not that hard to treat. An important part of egg binding is knowing when the crested gecko is supposed to lay those eggs. I've had it happen once and the female ended up recovering with no issues. And the way that I treated or helped her was by putting her in a warm bath and slowly pressing the egg so that it goes towards the cloaca. So you gently rub the tummy of the female and press that egg towards the cloaca, which imagine it will be here. You just press it until it ends up coming. She will end up pressing her tummy. You will feel how she presses and contracts all of her abdomen muscles and she ends up laying the egg. It is not a huge issue if treated, but it can lead to complications. So if you don't know how to do this, take her to a vet. Hemipenal prolapses are quite the opposite, something that comes out and it can't come back in. However, it can also happen due to a young age on the male breeder. Crested geckos, like many other reptiles, have two hemipenes. I made a video about mating behavior last week where we see how a hemipene comes out. If you're interested in seeing what a hemipene looks like, usually they only use one when breeding and once it comes out, it is really hard to put back in. It usually takes them about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe an hour, and in extreme cases, it can take them one or two days. In the worst Worst case is they can never put it back on their own. Usually people start to freak out at about 24 to 48 hours. If it's been more than 48 hours and your crusted gecko has not put a semipene back in, it is definitely recommended that you take it to a vet. By 48 hours, you should have already tried different techniques such as sugar baths, honey baths, warm baths, and all of those techniques that you will find online. I've had one or two hemipenal prolapses, of course not on me, on my geckos, that I have managed to put back in. It usually goes back in when you have a lot of humidity and a warm weather. So I tend to just do a warm bath that is not really deep nor too shallow. You want the gecko's hemipene to be able to submerge, but you also want the gecko to not be floating. 
Crusted geckos can swim. They're not the best, but they can swim, so they won't drown. But you don't want the crusted gecko to have a worse time than it's already having. Number three, we have neurological issues. Neurological disorders or issues are usually presented as a wobble. A wobble is identified when an animal does not have a stabilizer and they're not moving properly. Usually their head goes like this a lot and they're not just walking straight. They're just walking kind of goofy. They don't have a good depth perception. They can't see the bugs properly. Therefore, they eat less. They can't jump from one place to another properly. Therefore, they move less. And it can happen for two reasons. It can be either genetic or it can be environmental. They're usually genetic, but it can also happen due to an infection that has spread and it might be affecting the nervous system. So if this happens, it is a big problem and you should definitely go to a vet. Another environmental cause as to why a crusted gecko might develop a wobble can be dehydration or poor nutrition. These geckos usually get better once rehydrated and once they're eating properly. However, it is scary and it can lead to further complications, so avoid this. Number 4 of the list we have overweighting or underweighting. When a crusted gecko is underweight, people tend to notice more because people, on average, have their crusted geckos fatter than they should be. However, one is not better than the other. Malnutrition is always a big problem. Crusted geckos that are too big and too obese will have the same problems as a human that is too big and too obese. They will move less, they can develop heart problems, and some of them might develop something similar to diabetes. So it is important to watch your crusted gecko's weight, not overdo it and not underdo it. A healthy adult usually ranges from 35 grams for a small gecko to 50 grams for a bigger gecko. Now I've seen massive geckos that are like 60 or 70 grams and look healthy. You should know what a healthy crusted gecko looks like. And on number five of the list, we have metabolic bone disease, also known as MBD. MBD usually presents itself as kinks on the spine, tail, and even limbs. It can also create a jaw mismatch where it's either to the side, an overbite, or an underbite. So it's never gonna be visually pleasing. It's never something beautiful. It's never something that you see and it's normal. Now, as I've said, crusted geckos are really hardy, and I'd say it's harder to get your crusted gecko to have MBD than not. So if this happens to you, it's either genetic or you're taking really poor care of that crusted gecko. It can cause severe spine distortion where the spine is completely wrecked and it looks like the crusted gecko was completely stepped on and driven over and it is irreversible, which means that it can't go back to how it was. So this is a big problem. It doesn't happen much on crusted geckos, but it can definitely happen. All right, guys, that is all I have for today. I hope this video was useful. And if it was, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.